previously on Fan to Deck. It's charming, it's funny, and it's perfect for the demo. But it's also 10 years late. Why is this brand license happening now? We haven't seen a proper new Portal game in years. Unless... That doesn't mean this commercial is related to the Steam Deck. Uh, let's get into it. What's good, Deck Gang? Before we jump in, I want to ask you to hit the like button. It really helps the video reach more people. And if you're not subscribed, then make sure to subscribe and slap the bell too. So for those of you that don't know, Portal 1 and 2 got announced for the Nintendo Switch. Yes, you heard me correctly. In collaboration with NVIDIA Lightspeed Studios, Valve announced a compilation of the two Portal games to be released at $20 at some to-be-determined date under the title Portal Companion Collection. The trailer looks good, and this has led folks to speculate why this collection is coming to Switch now as Valve gears up to launch its handheld console. But before we look to the future, we must look to the past and acknowledge how right I was when I said that the Geico commercial meant something, right? But these are, in fact, the hazards of speculation. Though I believe strongly that the Geico commercial meant something, I could have never guessed that it meant a Portal compilation was coming to the Switch. In that same vein, I can't necessarily guess why Portal is coming to Switch now, but I'm pretty confident that this story isn't done being told. Could it mean Portal 3? Could it be a barometer used to compare the Steam Deck against the Switch? Or was this an NVIDIA-led passion project considering they already had what they needed from ports of Source Engine games to the NVIDIA Shield? I don't know. I honestly don't. Valve has continued to surprise me when it comes to the Steam Deck. I've rarely seen a game company so convinced that they have such a game-changing product that they are about to unleash onto the world. In retrospect, it seems like the launches of some of the most successful consoles were fraught with uncertainty. And while we have no idea whether or not the Steam Deck will be what many consider successful, it seems evident that Valve knows they have the potential to turn the gaming industry on its head. Who sends their console to be evaluated publicly by independent hardware experts four weeks ahead of launch? Who sends review units and press kits to outlets with an audience of less than 100,000? As a tease to the next topic in this video, who publishes their CAD files publicly? And who releases two of their best games on a competing platform? Valve, I guess. As mentioned, Valve were also bold enough to publish the 3D drawing files for the outer shell of the Steam Deck just a few days ago. On Friday, they published a blog post making the announcements that these files are now available to all tinkerers, modders, accessory makers, and all folks that just want to 3D print a Steam Deck. Valve provided a link to a GitLab repository with the requisite files, an STP file and an STL file alongside a nicely detailed PDF and a couple of wireframe renders. Now, I said they were quite bold in releasing this so early, but I was also made aware that Valve has precedent for a move like this. They released the CAD files for the Steam Controller a few months after its release and then did the same for the three primary components of the Valve Index just a few days prior to its own release. But I'm used to the likes of Sony patenting their faceplate so that no third party could make their own version. Conversely, Valve released these under a Creative Commons license, but they do provide an avenue to get in touch with them if you decide you want to use these materials commercially. Overall, this is a cool move for a number of reasons. In fact, a user on the Fanda Deck Discord who goes by Frontiersman has already shown their own 3D printed Steam Deck. And while I'm on the subject of Discord creations, Dakota Riley on our Discord has mocked up these micro SD card labels, which look cool. In any case, I look forward to the creations that come out of this move. Next, let's recap the new videos from LTT, Gamers Nexus, and The Fox. So Gamers Nexus and LTT both did teardowns. Both were generally impressed with repairability with one glaring exception. There are three components that most of us can agree we might want to replace. The analog sticks if they begin to drift, the hard drive if we need more space, and the battery as it gets older. Linus praised how easy the first two were to remove. The analog stick took 11 screws to remove, that is 8 for the case and 3 for the stick module. Similarly, it was 12 screws total for the SSD. The shield was an adorable little vest that looked like it could be placed onto another SSD, and Linus said that they'll be trying it with the new 2TB 2230 format SSD from Micron. The problem, however, was the battery. It was adhered with glue and there was a frame around the perimeter that made it incredibly difficult to get any leverage or wiggle on it. Still, Linus managed to open the Steam Deck, remove both analog sticks, remove the SSD, and eventually remove the strongly adhered glue within 65 minutes of a livestream teardown. 
and he only managed to break the micro SD card that was still in the Steam Deck. That's pretty impressive. Nonetheless, the point here is that the battery is not easily serviceable, and that's very disappointing. I think the community will get pretty good at removing it, and I've already seen people recommending the use of a fishing line to get under the battery. But still, it looks like the difficulty on this will be a little higher than we would have liked. On the subject of teardowns, iFixit has their own teardown coming, and they teased it and provided some x-ray pictures of the Steam Deck to whet our appetite. Can't wait for that one. Then the Fox released three videos of his own last week, all very useful. First, he addressed the size of the Steam Deck, saying it's not in fact too big. He used the GPD Win Max as a reference, which is my daily driver. I'll echo that the Win Max is not too big, but it's also not very ergonomic. It's more comfortable than it looks, but my hands can get a bit uncomfortable after very long sessions. While the Steam Deck is bigger than the Win Max, the ergonomics look like it'll cause me a lot fewer issues. The next video from the Fox has a deep dive on Forza performance in comparison to other handheld gaming PCs. There are places where the iNeo outperforms the Steam Deck, so definitely take a look for juicy, detailed benchmarks. And last but not least, he also released a really enlightening video where he was able to pull off 8 hours of battery life on dead cells. By throttling the clock speeds of the GPU and all CPU cores, he was able to turn off the fan completely and still maintain reasonable temperatures. Then he turned down or turned off everything he could like brightness and Wi-Fi. And as a result, 8 hours of battery life was achieved for dead cells. That video has since been taken down and he made a post as to why. It seems that people missed his core point. That you as a player will have the capacity to handle this tinkering easily from the Steam Deck itself. It's also important to note that he and others have made it clear that you can get 6 hours out of dead cells without any tinkering whatsoever. So I hope people are able to take the spirit of the tinkering at face value to better understand what this machine is capable of. One more thing to touch on here is some choice words from Tim Sweeney, CEO and still the majority owner of Epic Games. Now he said a number of things, so let me just show the tweet thread in its entirety. Stormy178 asks if there's any plans to make Fortnite compatible on Proton. He replied no, but quote, there's a big effort to maximize easy anti cheat compatibility with the Steam Deck, end quote. Well, this is extremely disappointing, but not necessarily unexpected. Blastermaster77 replied, why not? And Tim replied, quote, we don't have the confidence that we'd be able to combat cheating at a scale under a wide array of kernel configurations, including custom ones, end quote. I think you can see where this is going. So at lean UX guy fires back, quote, newsflash, CEO does not trust his own product, end quote. Tim says, with regard to any cheat on the Linux platform, supporting custom kernels and the threat model to a game of Fortnite size, yes, that's exactly right, end quote. And finally, Muspel21 says Tim just doesn't want their star game on a rival platform, and Tim says, quote, Epic would be happy to put Fortnite on Steam. We wouldn't be happy to give Steam 20 to 30% of its revenue for the privilege. Supporting Steam Deck hardware is a separate issue, but the market for non-Steam hosted games on limited availability Steam Deck hardware is how big exactly? End quote. Wow, so that is a lot, and I can spend an entire video about this. In fact, due to the series of tweets, some people have asked me to give an overview of dual booting because again, there are people that are brand new to PC gaming here. So I will absolutely do that very soon. But here are the takeaways. Tim doesn't want to bring Fortnite to Linux. He doesn't believe his anti-cheat service can be effective at a large scale on Linux, and he doesn't see a future for non-Steam games on Steam Deck. I would never accuse Tim of making any of these statements in bad faith, but I do have my own doubts about some of them. As an aside, folks are pointing out that Tencent, who have a 40% stake in Epic, are working on their own handheld. Apparently the application date for the patent is October of 2020. I don't know, for what it's worth this has been known for some time and I suspect that all the major players are toying with handheld ideas ever since the Switch. I've followed Tim on Twitter for a long time and I believe that these are his earnest opinions, but let's put all that to the side for now. If this is what he's saying on Twitter, then imagine the reaction from the developers of mega popular games that use Easy Any Cheat. What motivation do they have to make their games compatible with Linux if the CEO of the company that makes the anti-cheat is casting doubt on its effectiveness? If you're wondering why more of these games haven't been made to be compatible, then this might be why. On that subject, let's talk about Deck Verified. We are now up to a whopping 841 games that have been evaluated. 
we have 333 verified and 253 playable games. That's nearly 600 games right now that you can play on the deck with maybe minimal issues in the case of playable games. That's more than the entire library of the N64 and should surpass the entire library of the Dreamcast, GameCube, and then NES by the end of the week if we keep the current pace. If you want to see how much of your own collection is playable, take a look at the Check My Deck web app. It's pretty cool and lets you know of the status of your entire collection. I'll leave a link in the description below. And speaking of Steam Deck web apps, also check out this ETA calculator developed by Moo in collaboration with Gect. This app attempts to give you an ETA on when Valve will send you an email to purchase your Steam Deck. Now, this is just an estimator and even Valve's own ETA is subject to change, but I thought it was a fun tool. In any case, there's also 215 new unsupported games, bringing the total of unsupported to 255. The vast majority of these, of course, are in the status either because they're VR games or yes, because the anti-cheat is not supported. But there's hope yet. There are games like Rec Room and New Process that are in fact working on their Linux compatibility. And finally, let's talk about Steam Deck software updates. First, Proton7 has reached release candidate one, and it includes some support for the WMA codec, for example. Also, there's a new update to the Steam OS image for those with a dev kit or press kit. This one includes working FPS and TDP limiters, GPU clock controls, and FSR upscaling controls. They also boast improved voice chat, better functionality on suspend and resume, a new night mode available in the quick access menu, improved performance with vSync, and adaptive brightness. It looks like a lot of those rough edges are getting rounded off. And something in one of the recent updates has prompted the Fox to say that, quote, the last update for Steam Deck was Megaton, end quote. So we have some stuff to look forward to for sure. But that's going to do it for today. By the way, if you're new to PC gaming, be sure to check out my PC Gaming 101 playlist. There's only one video, but I'll be making some additions to it soon. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Deck Gang out. Goodbye.